Today, we're gonna to introduce acceleration in terms of an equation. We have, um, we've looked at acceleration on graphs before, haven't we? What does acceleration mean when it's on a graph? What, or, or it means in general, well, what does acceleration mean? Yeah, that's right. Speeding up or slowing down, right? Any change in velocity is considered acceleration. So it could be speeding up or could be slowing down. Does slowing down always mean negative acceleration? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You guys are like, it doesn't. So let's talk back to our rule that we looked at here, right? Our rule says... If an object is slowing down, if an object is slowing down, the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the motion, okay? If an object is slowing down, the object uh, has an acceleration that is the opposite direction as the motion. So we saw this on some graphs, okay? So let's just draw out a couple velocity versus time graphs here. If my object is doing this, Tell me what's happening in this particular graph. Are we moving in the positive direction or the negative direction? Mm -hmm. On a velocity versus time graph, this would be like negative 10, negative 5, 0, oh. 5, 10 meters per second. So are we moving in the positive direction or the negative direction? Negative. negative. Anything below the axes on a velocity versus time graph would be negative. So we're moving in the negative direction and which, what, are we speeding up or slowing down? Or do we have a constant velocity? Slowing down at axis. Good, we're slowing, we're slowing down. So what is, the, how do we find acceleration from a graph like this? It's the slope, isn't it? So look at my slope here. Is my slope positive or negative? my slope is positive, right? Which means I have positive acceleration. That matches our rule. We said if an object is slowing down, the signs of our velocity and our acceleration will not match, right? So that, that checks the rule that we've been learning, okay? That's, we've gotta make sure that we kinda keep that in mind. When an object is slowing down, our signs don't match. When an object is speeding up, our signs do match. So take a look at this example. If this again is velocity versus time, and I'm doing this, I'm moving in the negative direction, and what am I doing? I'm speeding up, oops, up, speeding up. So I'm speeding up in the negative direction. What is the direction of my slope of my line? Negative, which means I have a negative acceleration. So look, when I'm speeding up, my signs match. Okay, do you see how we can prove that on a graph? We're going to be able to prove that mathematically here in just a little bit, but we need to be able to see it graphically as well. Do we have any questions about that? Okay, so we have to remember that negative acceleration does not always mean slowing down. Right? Half the time it does, but it does not always mean that. Okay, um, what are the units for acceleration? Do you remember? We talked about these briefly. If I calculate the slope of my line, it's like taking the y-axis over the x-axis, isn't it? So this is meters per second and this is seconds. So my units come out to be meters per second per second, which is meters per second squared. That's gonna be our unit for acceleration. That's how we label that, okay? Because we take rise divided by run, meters per second divided by second, so that means so again, what acceleration is telling us is for every second that goes by, how much is my velocity changing, right? How many meters per second is changing for every second that goes by? We could also measure acceleration in kilometers per hour squared, right? And that's when we would say, how many kilometers per hour is our, acceler is our velocity changing for every hour that goes by? Right, that's really what we're looking at here. So let's see if we could just walk through an acceleration problem just using reason. Let's say that we start at a velocity of three meters per second and we accelerate three meters per second squared for two seconds. What's my final velocity? Give 
Can you think through what's happening here? We're starting out at three, and now we're speeding up at a rate of three meters per second for every second that goes by. So at zero seconds, we're traveling three. After one second, what are we traveling? How fast are we going? We're adding three to it, so now we're going six meters per second. And then after my second second goes by, how fast am I traveling now? Nine meters per second, right? My velocity increases three meters per second for every second that goes by. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Now we're going to be able to put it into equation, but we want to be able to think through what's happening. Your maybe slide it printed better than mine did. The, the equation, is it on there? Acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. Is that on your slide? Okay, I want you to keep it there. I don't want you to put it on your equation sheet just yet, and I'll show you that later. But this equation is how we solve for acceleration. We take change in velocity over change in time. Now, do you remember what this little symbol means, this little triangle symbol? It means change in, or delta is what it's called, delta. But it means what minus what? Do you remember? Final minus initial. Good. So in our equation, we would take acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Okay. Uh, the little F and the I, are we okay with those symbolizing final and initial? Does that make sense? Um, typically now with our time, we don't have to take final time minus initial time because they're not, typically the question will just tell us it took four seconds for it to happen. Right? They already did the delta for us. They already did the subtraction. I don't need to know that it started at a time of six seconds and it ended at 10 seconds. No, we just care that it took four seconds for it to happen, right? So we won't have to do a delta very much with that. But this is what that equation would look like. Again, I don't think you need to have it on your sheet because I'm going to show you a, an alternative to this here in just a minute. So keep this in mind, though, for the first couple problems there, okay? Um, I think we're going to practice. This one says... During the race, a sprinter increases from five seconds to seven and a half seconds over 1.25 seconds. What's the sprinter's average acceleration? Now, we're always calculating average acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration is the alternate to that, but that would be like using the derivative of time and we'd be getting into like infinitesimally small things and we're not doing that. So everything we calculate is average, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. So acceleration is equal. Am I going to go to 5 minus 7.5? No, I need to do it the other way around. 7.5 minus 5.0 over 1.25, right? And that gives me an acceleration of what? 2. 2.0 2 meters per second squared. Okay, sometimes we get caught up in the problems just writing it into an equation as we see it, right? And we would go five minus seven and a half. Uh, so just be really cognizant about using context clues to figure out what variable is it? How do we know? Things like that. How did I know that this was a velocity, um, velocity variable? Did, can you just know from the unit itself? Right? I know that if I see something with meters per second, that's going to have to be a velocity unit. Okay, it's got to be velocity. And so then I can use context clues to find out, is it my initial velocity or my final velocity? Okay, that's how we're looking for that. And then I knew this was time because it's seconds. And if I had something that was meters per second squared, what would that be? What would that tell me? Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't you try this one on your, try this one on your own. Her car is moving at a speed of negative 28.6. What's the negative tell us there? It's going either west or south, right? It's going in the backwards direction, okay? All right, try this one. Is that good? Did we remember to put in minus a negative and that becomes a plus, right? So I ended up with about 1.437 something, so I just rounded it up. And that would be, yeah. okay. I'm going to throw one more practice in here for us, just so I can ensure that we know how to do the algebra correctly. So let's say, let's say that my, 
let's say that my car um, accelerates at a rate of 6.29 meters per second squared, and it took one, uh, let's just, I don't know. I'm making up these numbers, so I'm a little worried what the answer is going to come out to be, but we're going to try it. It took 4.4 seconds to reach a speed of 31 meters per second. What was my initial velocity? Okay, that's what I want us to solve here. Okay, it says our car accelerates with a value of 6.29 meters per second and it took 4.4 seconds to reach a speed of 31 meters per second. What was my initial velocity? Okay, so let's kind of start making a list here of what we know. My acceleration is 6.29. Time is 4.4. What is this value, 31 meters per second? Final velocity is 31, and VI would be my question mark. Okay, so I've got to set up my algebra equation correctly here. So we're going to say acceleration. You don't have to include the units in the problem. Okay, we can drop those out. We just need to make sure we label our final answer with correct units. Um, final minus initial over t. Okay, so what's the algebra I have to do then to get vi by itself? Multiply by 4.4, and I do that on both sides. All right, that cancels it here. Multiply by 4.4. So I like to go ahead and just do that math. 27.68 equals 31 minus VI. Okay, how can we go, how can we keep moving through our algebra then? Okay, so I'm going to subtract. 31, so minus 31, that gives me negative 3.324 equals what? Does it just equal VI? It equals negative VI, right? So then if I have a negative on both sides, what can I do? I just, I'm essentially dividing by negative 1, right? I'm just going to get rid of that negative. So that means my initial... Velocity was 3.324 meters per second. And I'm not doing very good with sig figs there, but that's okay. Okay. Do we have questions about the algebra we have to do to make that work? Okay, I want you to think back up to this equation right here. 6.29 equals 31 over VI. 4.4. What if instead... I was solving for t. Do you remember the shortcut for solving for t right there? We're going to switch these two spots, right? If I was looking for t, if I was trying to solve for time, I would switch these two spots, and I would say t equals 31 minus whatever that was, right? I would end up switching those two spots. Is that clear? Okay, very good. Okay, good. So that's our introduction to acceleration. Does it? Let's, uh, let's go back and look at this one right here. My object, was she speeding up or slowing down? She's slowing down in the negative direction. What should the sign of our acceleration be? She's slowing down, but moving in the negative direction. The sign should be positive. And is that what our math came out? Right, it does. So the math will always do it for us, right? It will always check that. Just something else for us to think about. Okay, reminders here before we get into our big equations for today we need to kind of remember that velocity and acceleration they are not the same thing they don't mean the same thing velocity is how fast our position is changing the rate at which our position is changing and acceleration tells us the rate at which our velocity is changing okay so they are both rates they are both per time that's what rate is but they tell us two different things okay why don't you try this one on your own Do we see any red flags? Yes, no, do we see any red flags? Why 
What would be zero? We need to get these things in line in terms of their units. Right? Because this is kilometers per hour and this is in seconds. So if it were me, I would go ahead and convert this to meters per second using our shortcut that we maybe remember. Okay. Okay, so this problem, we really needed to pay attention to the context clues here that told us it was coming to a stop. That tells us final velocity. Did we remember to put zero minus 20.8? Right, it's really common for us to just kind of get into a habit of saying, oh, we're gonna take velocity divided by time, right? And we would have still gotten 4.17, but the negative comes from the fact that we took zero minus our initial velocity. So just make sure we're really being cognizant of that. If our final velocity is zero, we need to look at that. So in this case, we were moving in the positive direction and slowing down, which gave us a negative acceleration that matches our rule. Okay. Oh, do we think yes or no? No, I would agree. Do we have an example? Tell me. Okay. Okay, good. Do you have any, like. Yeah, okay, go, go, Grace. Like on the highway. Okay. Just one speed, you go that speed. Good, right? If we have cruise control set, right? That's a good option. Anytime we have, anytime we have constant velocity. Okay, constant velocity means we have no acceleration, but it does not necessarily mean that we are at rest. Very good. Okay. Let's get into our, um, these are our big equations, okay? And these are considered kinematic equations. Do you know what that prefix kina means? It means, yeah, we, we see it with kinetic energy, all this kind of stuff, but it means motion, okay? So these are our kinematic equations. They have to have constant acceleration. And so that means in order for us to use our kinematics equations, we have to have a segment of time that has constant acceleration. If we have multiple parts of our motion, like where it speeds up, then it stays the same, then it speeds up again, then it slows down, right? If we have a motion that does all of these things, we have to solve it in parts. We can't lump all of that into one equation and solve it. We need to be able to have a segment of time that has constant acceleration and we can solve that. Then we can move on and solve the next part, next part. Does that kind of make sense? We can't lump everything in and solve it. We have to have constant acceleration. All the things that we do will fit that category. We just have to understand that we might have to solve things in multiple pieces, okay? Um, does your slide have an equation on here? Yeah. It cropped mine out. Okay, all right, very good. I'll put it up here. Um, I don't know why it printed so funky on mine, but it did. So your first equation is VF equals VI plus AT. Is that what it looks like? Yeah. Very good. Okay. I want this one to go on your equation sheet, and I want you to put them under the label. Make sure that's a little plus right there. Little plus. I want you to put them under the label on your equation sheet that says kinematics. Okay, these are going to be your kinematics equations. My equation sheet takes up one full side for the whole year. Okay, this is what my equation sheet looks like. Okay, so this is roughly what you'll need. So size accordingly. You could use both sides of yours. It's not a big deal. Okay, but this goes under my label of kinematics. We're going to have three of them. This is number one. 
Okay, so if you want to even label it as first, second, third, you can. I will oftentimes reference them as this is your first kinematics equation, second kinematics, right? So if we had them all in the same order, we'll know. Okay, but VF equals VI plus AT. We recognize all of those variables, don't we? Right? And let me show you where this equation came from. So I'll give you a second to get it written down, and then we'll look at it. So think back to the equation we just had for acceleration. Acceleration equals VF minus VI over T. Let's rearrange this equation a little bit. Let's move T out. Move T out. That leaves us with A times T equals VF minus VI. What if we move VI to the other side? That leaves us with VI plus AT equals VF. Doesn't it look exactly like that one? Right? So that's why I said. The equation that we just used, I'm going to give you a better one. I like this version better. But realistically, they solve exactly the same thing, don't they? Right? We do exactly the same thing. All the variables here we're comfortable with. We know what's happening. Okay. The reason I... You, you've learned two other equations before your equation sheet. Velocity equals displacement over time. Okay, did we use D or X? Do you remember? What? I don't remember. I don't remember what you used. Displacement or distance over time. You use this one. This equation only works when you're moving at a constant speed. So zero acceleration. So we just don't bother putting in our equation sheet because we don't solve that many problems like that. But that is one equation that you learned. You also learned this one. We just didn't put that on your equation sheet either. Okay, so we're starting with our big ones, our kinematics. All right, let's try one here. Of a, a bus that is traveling 30 kilometers per hour speeds up at a constant rate of 3.5 meters per second squared. What velocity is it at 6.8 seconds later? So I need to start making a list of what I do have. What is this 30 kilometers per hour telling us? Is it velocity, is it acceleration, or is it time? It's velocity, good. And would you say it's initial velocity or final velocity? Initial, initial. okay. Do we like the unit or are we gonna convert? Okay. We're gonna convert. So we're gonna take 30 divided by 3.6 because that's our shortcut. And that equals 8.33 meters per second. Okay, it speeds up at a constant rate of 3.5 meters per second squared, which would be equal to my acceleration. And time is 6.8. I'm solving for final velocity. That's my question mark. I know it might seem um, kind of cumbersome to make this list right now, even though our problem is relatively simple. But as we work through more difficult problems and have more variables, I think making yourself a list is really helpful. So I'm going to encourage you to do that, even on these problems that seem simple. Okay. So we're just going to plug it in. VF equals VI plus A times T. And we get a velocity final, uh, I had somewhere around 32. Good. 32.13 meters per second. Does that seem to fit? Right. It at least is greater than our initial velocity. We had a positive acceleration. We know it's speeding up. That at least fits within the realm. Had we come out with a negative number, I think that would have been a red flag. Right? Had we come out with a number smaller than our initial, that would have been a red flag. So we need to have some sort of idea about what our answer should be. Even if it's a general idea, we need to be expecting here that our number was getting bigger, right? And so we were able to check that. But all right, very good. Any questions there? Make sure that we see these red flags in terms of the units, okay? They need to make sure that they match. This is your second kinematics equation. I want you to have that on your sheet. So go ahead and do that. And then we'll talk through what each thing means here. Okay, so looking at this kinematics equation, we said x, i, can be set equal to zero most of the time. So in this problem, we've got a guy on top of some building, some tower, and he's going to throw a ball to the ground, right? That's as fancy as motion diagrams. This, might, this is pretty fancy. So 
I'm not going to brag about it, but it looks pretty good. Okay, this is one of my better ones. Okay, but when I'm drawing my problem, you can choose your initial displacement or your starting point either at the ground, and you could start, you know, my initial displacement is this high, but my preference is always to make my starting location at where my motion started. And that means my initial position is zero, right? My initial position is at the origin. If this is a big coordinate grid, my initial position is at the origin, which means my X, I would be zero in that case. Does that kind of make sense? And then my final displacement here would probably end up being negative, right? Maybe negative 36 meters. That negative tells me that my object is ending up below where it started. That's all that that's telling me, okay? So we're going to walk through that as we get into vertical problems. For horizontal, it doesn't make a huge difference. But almost always, x sub i will be equal to zero because it's our starting point. That means we don't care what happened before that. We only care about the motion that we're examining, okay? Let's try one. It says a train accelerates from rest at a constant rate of 3.15 meters per second for 1.57 minutes. How far does it travel in this time? Okay, so let's kind of write out what we know. Accelerates from rest. That's a context clue that we have to take into account. What variable does that represent? Good, the initial velocity, and it would make my initial velocity zero, right? Initial velocity is zero because it says it starts from rest. Constant rate of 3.1 meters per second squared must tell me that it is what variable? Yep, A, acceleration, 3.15. 1.57 minutes, does that seem to match our other variables? No, so I need to convert that. 1 point, oops, 1.57 minutes, and we'll convert minutes to seconds. So we'll multiply it by 60. Um, and we get somewhere around 94 seconds. 94.2 seconds, agreed? Okay. Um, how far does it travel? What does that mean that we're solving for am i solving for final velocity no final distance or displacement so i'm looking for x final okay which equation can i use can i use my first one or my second one i have to use the second one because in my first equation x final is not even in that equation so i can't use it so i'm going to use my second one and it says x final is equal to x initial plus vi times time plus one-half a t squared. And so x final is what we're solving for, so it's going to stay. What do we know x initial is always equal to? Zero, right? And in this problem, vi is equal to zero. So vi times anything would be what? Zero, right? So it gets to get dropped. One half times A times 94.2 squared. Okay, so do you guys already plug that into your calculator? I behind. Do we get a pretty big number here? 13,976 meters. Does that seem to match? Did we at least expect a positive displacement here? Right, it was moving forward and it was speeding up, right? It should make sense that running for almost two minutes, right? We're moving pretty quickly. We're, we're gonna cover a lot of distance here, okay? Any questions about the algebra or how we came up with that? Yeah. Uh, where it says VIT, why did you put that in? Okay, good, because VI, because VI was equal to zero, I could have taken zero times 94.2, but anything times zero would just be zero, wouldn't it? Yeah, so we just leave it out. So that's okay. Anytime our velocity initial is zero, we can just plug in a zero. Okay. 
Okay, so try it on your own and I'll get it up here in just a minute or so. So this is our third kinematics equation, and I will reference them as such. I will call this one, this is your third kinematics equation. Okay, so we can reference it in that way. Okay, go ahead and put this one on your equation sheet as well. What variable is this equation missing? Time, right? So if we're given a problem without information regarding time, this is probably the one we're going to use, right? We're always going to be missing something, right? Plus the thing that we're being asked to solve for. But this one does not have time. So this is a good equation for us to use if we're not given information about time. Can you look at your equations and see which, which two variables are present in every one? Acceleration and what else? Velocity, initial velocity. So for every problem that we do, we have to know how, how fast it's going at the beginning and we have to know acceleration. Those are two things we have to have. So if we're given a problem without one of those things, we might have to solve for it first and then move on to solve for our final goal. Just like in our last problem, we solved for acceleration first and then final displacement. But a lot of times the problem won't tell you that. It won't tell you to solve for acceleration. It will just say, final displacement, and you're going to have to reason through the fact like, oh, I don't have acceleration. I need to find that first. So just a heads up. All right, here we go. We're almost done, I promise. A car starts at rest. What's that tell us? Initial what is zero? Initial velocity is zero because it's starting from rest. It speeds up at 3.5 meters per second squared. That would be acceleration. After the traffic light, how far will it have gone when it is traveling? 25 meters per second. How far will it have gone? What variable does that mean I'm solving for? XF. XF or displacement. Good. That's my question mark. What do I always know about XI? It's zero, right? I don't very often put that in my list because I just know it's zero. But you can, okay? I just don't, I won't list it very often. So again, we're not given any information about time. Now answer this, couldn't I use these three variables and solve for time? I could, but do I need to? I don't necessarily need to. So there are lots of paths to get to our final answer. Lots of ways we can get from start to finish, but some ways are simpler than others. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the third, which says VI, no, sorry, VF squared equals VI squared plus two A Delta X. Now, doesn't a delta X just mean X final minus X initial? Isn't that what delta means? 
It means final minus initial. And we know that initial x is just zero. So really when I solve for delta x, I'm solving for x final. Okay, because we know that the initial position is zero. Okay, so 25 squared, what is that? 625? Okay, so 625 equals 7 times x final. So I'll take that divided by 7, and I get x final ugh, equal to about 89.3 meters. Okay, do we feel okay about that one? 89.3 meters. The expectation was that we were moving forward, right? Starts at rest and speeds up in the positive rate, right? We are going forward. We have a positive displacement. Do, do I need to know any information about time here? I don't need to know. It didn't ask me. I don't need to know. Okay, good. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump forward. Bump, 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 bump. Stop on this one right here. A car starts from rest. Do you see this one? I think I skipped one or two problems. We're bumping ahead just a little bit. A car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly for a time of 5.21 seconds for a distance of 110 meters. Determine the acceleration of the car. Okay, so let's list what we do have. Starts from rest. Now, in these problems, we're not just studying the previous equation. So these ones, like any equation is fair game. We're going to have to figure out what equation we're using. Okay, so VI is equal to zero. Acceleration is our question mark. Time is 5.21. X final is 1. 10. So do we have any thoughts about what equation we might want to use? I, I do think it needs to be the second one because what variable are we missing? We don't have any information about the... Well, we don't have acceleration, you're right, but that's our question mark. But we also don't have anything about final velocity. I don't know anything about the final velocity. And so that's missing from the second equation. So that's a, a clue for me to know to, to use that one. So my second equation looks like this. X final equals X initial, which we know is zero, plus VI times time, which VI is zero, plus one half A T squared. Okay, so we're going to do some algebra here. 110 is equal to 5.21 okay, squared times a half. That's what gave me 13.57. And then I will divide that to the other side. and I get an acceleration somewhere around 8.1. Okay, look, you're gonna have to really think through what the problem is asking you and really use context clues about what information is needed and what is not. So I'm gonna give you a head start. This is gonna be the last one we do today. I want to give you a few minutes and then we'll work through it as a class, but let's see what we can do. That's okay. Are we getting a little bit stuck or are we have an idea of where we're going? Okay, okay. <laughs> So this question is tricky because it feels like it gives you all the information, doesn't it? So what, what are you really solving for? 
right? If it can or cannot. So how do I solve for that? Right? So what do, what do we think? Is it long enough or is it not? It's not. So how did you go about solving for it? You use number three. Okay. But what variable did you actually solve for? Did you plug in 150 and 27.8? Yeah, so then you're like, well, what are you solving for? Yeah, I got a number. So did you just find out that it wasn't equal? Well, how did you do it? You solved for time and then did what? Okay, so here's, I'm going to show you, I have two pathways. Did anybody feel like they had a successful path to solve? What do you think, Grace? What'd you do? I solved for final displacement. Good. You solved for final displacement and then you just checked to see, is it longer than 150 or shorter than one? Exactly. I think that's one path to get to our answer. We just reserve, we held back 150 and used it as a comparison, as like a marker. Okay. And that's what I did as well. I did it both ways. I, in my first set up here, I pulled out 150. I didn't use 150. I solved for my final displacement and I got 193 meters which tells me that 150 meter runway is not long enough to reach the final speed that we wanted to reach. Okay, so is that how you went about it? Just like that, Grace? Yeah? Okay, perfect. So that's, what, well, that's the way I did it. You could have also come down here in this green and used your 150 but held out your final velocity and figured out how fast will I go after 150 meters? And it tells me right here, I'm not getting up to my speed. So that also tells me that my runway is not long enough. So that's a kind of a tricky problem, but we actually had to, we had to hold back one of the numbers because otherwise we're stuck at a situation like, well, we can solve for time, but what does that tell us, right? What does that tell us? So you just have to kind of use context clues and really think about the big picture. What is it asking me? Okay, and so then I just reserved one of my numbers as to use as a check or a comparison. Okay, fair enough? Okay, any questions with that one? Okay, so if you feel like you get to a spot there where you're like, well, I don't know what I'm solving for, we need to kind of reevaluate what is the question asking, right? Is there a checkpoint that I need to use or something like that?